Okay, I'm back. We're going to do some trait care now on our patient. I am not going to be taking the inner cannula out. We're going to pretend that the inner cannula that this patient has is disposable, as many of them at HMC have been that we have seen. So we're basically going to be cleaning the outside of the trach. If it's a newer trach, it might be pretty bloody um, with lots of drainage out there. If it's an older trach, you're probably just going to have a lot of mucus and saliva, you know, different things around the, the uh, trach area. Go ahead and put your clean gloves on. I would have done my hand hygiene. I would have checked my patient, all those good things that we did before. And I'm going to go right ahead and remove the old dressing, which can be kind of tricky to get it out from under here. And feel free that if there is anything there, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just wiping it like off of them here using this and going ahead and we're going to throw this away. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to increase it in my gloves. Okay. You are going to have your sterile saline or your sterile water as your facility uh, policy would have you have. Um, these kits are sterile. Everything in here is nice and sterile. Every facility has different types of kits, so you have to get to know yours. We have some here that have different supplies in them. This one happens to have a little inner tray and another tray. And the reason for this little handle on here is so that you can reach in with your clean hands and take this tray, don't go flipping it around like I did, but you can take this tray out. You can also go ahead and take your um, little drape out here and you can go ahead and you can, this is kind of like when you have your Foley catheter drape, you know, it's kind of there just to protect the area. So touch it as little as you can. You go ahead and put that on the patient. You can also use it as your sterile area here on your table, whatever you would like to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour my solution, whatever it would be. Some places have you used just sterile saline, some places sterile water. Um, you're going to go ahead and pour some in your washing area and some in your rinsing area if you were to be using both of them. Um, we're not going to be using it for that, but it's okay to go ahead and pour that in there. And try and get that done before you put your gloves on because then you'll get caught and you'll need a friend to come in and help you. So these are sterile gloves, so I'm going to attempt to get them on my sweaty, larger hands. And see what they are. And we'll see how that goes. I can check inside. Take two. No. There we go. Not too shabby. All right. All right, even if you're nervous and sweaty, you can get them on. <laughs> okay, you're done. All right, so that's good enough. Now we can go ahead and dig in here and see what we find. If we were going to be um, cleaning the cannula itself, we would be using the little um, brush. I can just go ahead and throw that in there in case I decide I want to dust anything with that. We have some pipe cleaners. We have some q-tips or little swabs we have a dressing in here our new drape to put under and we have some four by fours in here and without getting things too contaminated i can just put that over there since we did that and get these back in here so the reason i'm taking these out i'm going to use them like washcloths to wash around the area and I'm also going to be using my little swabs to cleanse around. So you want to clean the, the cleanest area and go to the dirtiest area. With this patient, it probably would have been a good idea for me to loosen his gown um, to go ahead and reach things. Now I'm kind of going to have a little bit of a contaminated hand here in my sterile one over here. 
but you need to, this is where you really need to get in. And you need to get down by the stoma and actually clean around it. So you just swipe and you can throw it away. And if you need to go again, you could swipe and throw it away. Now, if I knew that that's how I was going to clean his, I would have an extra two ready to go because I would want to I'm going to use them again, but I'm going to pretend they're extras. And so I'm going to clean around again and toss and clean around. Whoops, they wouldn't go in there, but they wouldn't be open like that. So you're making sure you get all the way around there really, really well. I can take my four by four. You don't want it dripping in water. You don't want to be dripping things down in there. Okay, but let's see if I can open it with one hand. We'll try and keep this hand as still as possible. So again, you're just going to be doing the best you can to, to get around this. Okay, um, so you're going to be getting your finger or something in there. You could use your pipe cleaner, poking it through. I'm going to take a new clean area and I'm going to go again. And my video person's tummy is growling. <laughs> so I'm going to pick on her. Okay, now I'm going to kind of concentrate on the outer area here. And I'm not going to worry as much as about touching this. So we're just going to clean around out here. There may be a lot of grit and grime, mucus stuck here. You could use those pipe cleaners and kind of clean around it. And then I change and use a new area. Okay. If you needed to, you have your dry 4 by 4s You could go in here. And again, you could dry a little bit. Now notice I don't have the kind of 4 by 4s where the, it's very thready and they stick out, you certainly wouldn't want your patient to aspirate any threads in there. Okay, so just kind of wipe it. The idea is just to get it nice and clean. That's all it is. Um, now you're gonna go ahead and put your new dressing on. You can see this one is almost like stitched around. The threads aren't hanging out. You do the best you can to keep this area nice and sterile and, you know, clean. Um, again, I probably should have taken his gown off. To me, this is the hardest part about changing a dressing, is trying to get your fingers under there. You know, I'm probably, it's probably bad for Ruthie to get a picture here. And get your dressing back around. Make sure you pull it up in there so it's tucked around your drape. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you need to change your ties. Uh, you can go ahead and change this cloth type of tie by yourself. You can thread it through, put it around, thread it, you know, take it back and tie it on one side. Um, you can tie a square knot, um, any kind of knot that will stay. It's got to stay secure. Okay. Once you have your new one on, you can take off the old. Not until you have the new one completely on can you take off the old. There's a potential that this person could cough or yank and pull this out and pff, out goes your trick. So that could be real troublesome. If you're doing a Velcro change here around the neck, you have to have another person. It can't be just anybody. It has to be another LPN, RN, or um, respiratory therapist it has to be licensed personnel so you need someone to come in and help you so they can hold it down while you rehook the velcro back around so he's all nice and neat and tidy and ready to go